Last episode, we tested having crew on board to cross the Sea of Cortez. Feeling okay? Our Spanish and our Argentinian friends had a great time discovering firsthand the uncomfortable healing life of sailors. But they were great sports about it all. We explored the relatively lush town of San Blas, found our first crocodile, and continued on our journey south. Look at this bad boy! <laughs> we started to get a taste of the famously rolly Pacific Coast anchorages, but it was the traffic of jet skis that we wanted to escape most. There was a small bay just minutes south of Chicala that we wanted to check out because it looked anchorable based on the satellite view of the area. The area looked lush and ripe for exploring, but we were wrong about it being protected. Satellite views can be deceiving. Even in the relatively calm conditions, there was quite a bit of swell sweeping right into the bay. Complete change from Baja. It's green and nice. It's a beautiful bay, pity the swell. So we lazily meandered for about an hour more down the line to Rincón de Guayabitos. As the name suggests, this shoreline corner was probably once lined with guava trees. These days, it's lined with hotels, resorts, restaurants, and palapas. One of our sailing guidebooks states that the small island with an anchorage on its eastern side in the area is abandoned, but local tourism is alive and well here with a constant stream of pangas transporting people for day trips to the tiny claustrophobic beach. When night started to fall, we explored the island as the last tour panga left with its passengers. Now the island was more or less abandoned. The next morning we were off to Bahia de Banderas to hit the critical turning point in our journey. We were going to round Punta de Mita. We almost to Puerto Vallarta. The Punta is covered in large hotel complexes. A couple of weeks before, inaccurate charts had led another sailboat straight onto the reef and beach at night. We heard from local cruisers that although the owner was trying very hard to salvage his vessel, the hotel was making it impossible to access the beach with the necessary equipment to push the boat off. Giving a katana around for its money. Impromptu uh, race with a katana catamaran. I'm not sure why he's going so slow. What's with that? Robbie spoke to his mama on the phone as whales jumped just meters behind the boat. See, he's like, you know, I'm going to go to Marano. Giving us a shocking entry into La Cruz, which is the town and anchorage just north of Puerto Vallarta. La Cruz has all the necessities that cruisers love, including food, taco, and marine stores, either accessible by foot or by a short bus ride to the next town called Bucerías. We had a nice time in La Cruz, but notice that the place was somewhat of a Venus flytrap for cruisers. Spice tour.
So we picked our weather window for rounding Cabo Corrientes and took off from the bay. There always seems to be some sort of natural commotion going on in this bay. Whether it be wind for sailing, birds, dolphins, turtles, whales. We picked up a free mooring at the first of the Isla Marietas. We observed a growing number of pangas showing up as the day progressed, as well as lots of bird life and interesting rock formations. In the past, these islands were used for military testing. The area has since become a nature preserve. But at the beginning of the 20th century, this place was being bombed, which created a lot of strange holes and shapes in the rock. In the 1960s, Jacques Cousteau visited the Marietta Islands and influenced the government to stop setting off explosives in this biologically rich site. We drifted alongside the second Marietta Island for some time. We were visited by government boat, and they asked to see our park passes. We purchased national park passes from the Whale Museum in La Paz several months earlier, and they finally came in handy. We watched the whale watchers, pangas full of eager visitors chasing the whales around. So it was infested with whales <laughs> and boobies and tourists and rules. Yeah, we're leaving just as uh, yeah, we're all going the party to... boats show up. Yep, and we're going to Yalapa, which is about 12 miles southeast from us, and we are just practically drifting at two knots. All the way down this coast, we have been seeing the familiar sight of bobbing sea turtles hanging out at the surface. Sometimes they scoot away, while at other times they seem to be sleeping. All the way to Yelapa, we were surrounded by whales flailing and splashing around. We discussed with each other in great detail why they might be doing that. But really, we wanted to know. Maybe we have a whale expert viewer. Let us know why you think they do this in the comments. He's waving at us. What do you think about giant whale schlongs? Um, well, we haven't seen any yet. Huh. It's heavy breathing all around us. Yeah, it's like a giant orgy pit of whales. Oh, and, uh, uh. <laughs> we turned on the engine as we approached Yalapa. A local panga came out quickly to greet us. He offered us a mooring ball for the night. 200 pesos, or about 10 to 12 dollars. A fair price, but we only had that much money left in our entire monthly budget. So we politely declined and squeezed in with our own anchor among some pangas in the corner of the bay. Ilapa is a small and deep bay, with two tiny shelves of sandy bottom about 6 meters deep on either side. A river runs from a waterfall somewhere up the trail in the valley. The area has a fair amount of visitors, but it felt relaxed at the same time. It was a puppy! Run, 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 run. Oh. Oh. 
Вы здесь? <laughs> With many little nooks and crannies to explore, it was a really great place to ramble around after having had enough of the bigger city slogging. Angel trumpet, the, the juice that comes out of it is, is extremely poisonous. And then you touch it. We crossed over the river, which is the usual route for folks making their way around town. And settled in for the evening, breathing in some of that sweet, sweet mosquito-repelling smoke. There are usually two choices for all sailors. Motor through a sketchy spot in light weather, or brace for the wind and seas and propel yourself forward. We chose calm weather to round Cabo Corrientes. Yeah, this guy over there going opposite direction. At this cape, there is a meeting of different weather patterns and currents, making it quite bumpy in rough conditions. There is a sense of accomplishment when you get through a bad situation, but there's also a sense of accomplishment and of getting away with something when you can round a treacherous cape without any fuss at all. We only had to dodge some whales. We did see something new and strange in the water there, however. I think that's algae. The water remained as red as blood all the way to our destination, which was at Punta Ipala. Oddly enough, the redness disappeared at the entrance to the small bay, and there's where we caught our dinner. We edged in as close as possible to the pangas, which was the only suitable spot to anchor in this place, just like at the last anchorage. <laughs> Checking out our neighbors, we thought about how many other humans are out there with the same ambition, the same game plan. The small rolly spot would be a great quick rest before setting out again tomorrow, bright and early, for our entry into what is known as the Gold Coast of Mexico. That name implies something really pleasant. Coming up in the next video, we encounter the eerie red cloud again that freaks us out and makes us second guess the depth sounder. We pull into a spot that seems like our very own personal resort and we had the dinghy stolen from the back of the boat just the other night in Malake. Pretty upsetting. Please join us next time. Thank you to everyone who has helped us along the way. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and support the making of these movies. Mm -hmm.